Hello and welcome to Crime Bites, the show where we talk about some truly bizarre and disturbing crime cases. My name is Liz and today is True Crime Tuesday. So, how many animal lovers do we have with us today? Myself included, because this one is going to be rough. <sighs> Let me start by showing you a quick clip of a husky named Clyde. I was born with a neurological condition called cerebellular hypoplasia, which is an underdevelopment of the part of the brain called the cerebellum, which controls all of our motor skills. That's what makes it difficult for him to walk straight, but he is very happy and it does not cause any pain. Clyde is a husky Malamute mix, we believe, and he has stolen the hearts of thousands of people in the USA and all over the world by his sweet nature and wobbly walk, which we called Clydeways. Clyde goes through life Clydeways his way, which is accepting yourself for who you are, the beautiful way you are. We considered Clyde special abled with special abilities. He is not disabled, he is special abled, and we need to change the way we look at and think about those that are different. Inspirational, right? So Clyde the Super Husky was the poster child, if you will, for a nonprofit organization called Special Needs Animal Welfare League, or SNAL for short. Now, nonprofit organizations were always something that confused me a little and still kind of do a little if we're being completely honest here, which is a tiny bit embarrassing for me personally because people in my family and who are very close to me run some. Now, SNAL was a 501c3 organization, which essentially means that it is tax exempt and donations made to this organization are tax exempt as well. So the founder of SNAL was a woman named April McLaughlin or April Addison. Here's a quick clip of her explaining her organization. I rescue special needs dogs because it's my passion and I want to help as many dogs as I can. Bullied as a child and left behind has really caused me to be very empathetic and compassionate towards anyone who's left behind, especially the underdogs. Hence, no pun intended, but these are underdogs and people always pass them up. They usually would be euthanized otherwise. And so I've chosen to save them and adopt them into my family. She's in the process of creating a nonprofit called Special Paws. Her hope to create a sanctuary for these special pups and help them find forever homes. But she needs help to make her dream a reality. That's why she's joined forces with another Valley organization, Paper Clouds Apparel. Every two weeks we team up with a special needs cause and then we take artwork that individuals with special needs have, have created and we put those on our shirts. The artists have all created images of April's dogs, half the proceeds. So as you can see, nonprofits have to get creative. Those shirts are so precious and so is Clyde. She used dogs such as Clyde as spokes dogs to help promote the work that she was doing. Here is a clip of the type of promotional events that Clyde would participate in. Clyde represents the special needs community, spreading joy and happiness wherever he goes, making everyone realize that who you are, the way you were born, your special abilities make you super. You are uniquely you, and that is enough. No matter what your circumstances, he does not sit in wallow. He keeps going, keeps getting up, keeps trying, no matter how many times he falls down. It is so motivational to watch him and to see him succeed. Being different and unique is your superpower. Remember that. Think life Clyde ways. I mean, it's totally working on me. He's definitely one of the best motivational speakers that I've heard in a while. And his freaking little face. <sighs> 
Unfortunately, this isn't a motivational YouTube channel per se, anyway, and we're about to get into the bizarre and straight up horrifying shortly. So SNAL was a rescue organization that specialized in taking in animals with special needs like Clyde so that they could focus on giving them the care that they needed. They would receive sizable donations to do so as care for such animals isn't typically cheap. Due to a high volume of stray dogs, particularly in the South, and lack of homes for said dogs, rescue organizations will typically work together to foster and place dogs until they can get them to their forever homes. Here is another dog that they took in, Mako, a German Shepherd who could not use his front legs, but was able to move around using a specialized wheelchair. One particular organization called Yaki Animal Rescue in Texas placed two of their special needs dogs, Checo and Butters, with Shawl, as April assured them she would be able to provide better care for them. Butters alone was sent with a $1,500 check for his care along with plenty of food, pee pads, and dog beds. Everything seemed to be working out just great as far as relocating these two dogs and getting them settled into their new homes, but then communication kind of slowed way down and ultimately ceased. Now, especially with nonprofits being overworked and underpaid and underappreciated, it's a common issue to be overworked. And depending on the organization, the rewards can make up for this. But in this instance, typically when Snall would not get back to another rescue about the status of whatever dogs they took in, it would kind of just get dropped or not followed up on. And it was probably assumed that they were busy caring for the animals with the special needs. In this instance, though, it didn't sit right for whatever reason with the people at Yaki, and they decided to look into the situation further. They started this past June, and when reaching out more aggressively didn't work, they actually ended up going out to Arizona to attempt to visit Snall, and what they discovered was literally beyond their wildest nightmare. After taking some photos of April's backyard and attempting to get help, another organization who had also worked with Snall named Handover Rover jumped on board as soon as they caught wind of what was happening. And shortly after that, this video was aired and started circulating social media. Holding our dogs hostage. Please help us. She has Checo. She has Checo. That's Butters. Oh, <laughs> this woman is April Addison. She introduced herself to me as Taylor McKinley. She lied. She has over 16 other aliases. She has acquired over 57 special needs dogs from over 30 rescues, you guys. And she has one of mine. This is our sweet blind boy Marbles. He came from the 92 dog rescue mission out in Mississippi and that's where I met April. She stepped in and offered to take him because she's special needs. Other well-known rescues had worked with her. They'd done home checks with her. They had good experiences. She was on the fucking dodo. I believed her. I fucked up so bad. The girls from Yaki Animal Rescue were sent anonymous footage. This is April's backyard and these are our dogs. We've tracked 57 dogs back to her property and identified some of them begging for them back and she refuses. Once we obtained the new address, we immediately drove over there to try to get marbles and she refused. The smell that came from that house, you guys, you can't wash out of your clothes. You can hear no less than 40 dogs screaming and begging for us to get them out of there. So as you can see, what a literal shit show. I don't even know where to start with this. The pleas for help were finally answered though, and on September 22nd, her house was raided and there were 55 animals found inside her house. Five of these dogs had to be immediately euthanized due to the horrific condition that they were found in. And there were five dogs already dead that were found in her freezer. Her apartment was only 950 square feet, and photos here show the horrific conditions that the place was discovered in. 
She had what can only be described as a hoarding situation. Crates and boxes stacked up to seven feet high filled with caked up dog pads in a few of the rooms. The air quality was so poor that the people who were going in and out had to wear respirators. She also had her elderly mother living with her and I believe she may have been being paid to care for her as well. She literally didn't have a working toilet in her house. So initially she was charged with over a hundred charges. Most of these were initially dropped, but then she was recharged. I believe it was on November 14th, but it was last week. And right now that's about 77 pending charges. So let's hope that some sort of justice will be done for these poor animals, but also for April's mother who was also subjected to these inhumane conditions. So, what happened to the five particular dogs that we mentioned in this story? And remember, there were 55 of these poor animals. So Butters is back with his original family who is planning on formally adopting him. He has anxiety issues, but is expected to make a full recovery. Checo went to be fostered with Handover Rover, where he is receiving behavioral training before he will be ready to be adopted. Some newer behavioral issues indicate that he was physically abused while he was there. Unfortunately for Marbles, the blind boy showed in Handover Rover's video, they believe that he is deceased as well. They were offering a $10,000 reward for him and with no questions asked. I was thinking about going out there. Unfortunately, recent information leads them to believe that Marbles was brought to the vet for cremation way back in July. The description matches Marbles, but because he wasn't microchipped, they can't be completely positive. So if you do see him out there, they, they want him. Clyde was in such a horrific state when he was found that there is, there's no tactful way to say this, he had feces caked and matted to him so badly that he could not use the bathroom. They had to shave it away. Can you even imagine? Now, because Clyde could actually walk, this horrific condition was a result of him basically being shoved in a box where he couldn't even stand and then not allowed to use the bathroom because he was actually house trained. I, I just can't. Whew. Anyhow, here is a picture of poor Clyde in recovery, and here he is dressed up for Halloween. And poor Mako was one of the unlucky boys who also did not make it. Here is a short video that was made to memorialize him. left in the backyard in the Arizona heat without his wheelchair and was in such a terrible septic condition when he was brought in that he had to be put down. So in Arizona, you only need a business license, not permits of any sort to start an animal rescue. This case is definitely bringing awareness to the somewhat laxer laws in Arizona and other states around these organizations. Unfortunately, the flip side of that is that the more hoops that people are going to have to jump through to help, the less people are going to be willing to help. So balance is going to be needed to keep in mind moving forward. There have already been meetings about how to fix some of these issues as a result of this case. So another unnerving thing about this case, as if there wasn't enough already, is there are still 13 dogs that are being held for a judge to determine if April can have them back because they're her family dogs. Poor Super Clyde didn't even make this list, which is a bit messed up, but good for him. Her initial request was denied, but she has until January 2nd to work on her appeal and make it look good. She is currently facing at least nine felony animal charges along with nine similar misdemeanors. 
She is currently out on bond and is awaiting her next hearing, which is on November 30th. And that is going to do it. But as always, let's end today on a more positive note. So I came across today's story. I should actually say my mom came across today's story while we were both in the process of adopting dogs this summer. So for today's positive note, I am going to share the doggies that we ended up getting and their stories. So here is my beautiful mother with her sweet girl, Ember, who is a Lhasa Apso. And my boy, Scooter, who is also actually a Texan, he was transported up to Vermont where we were lucky to meet him. And he puts up with my um, animal costume fixation <laughs> for a minute and a few treats. Um, so here's a cute clip of him being an adorable little model. <laughs> All right, everyone. So my last remark will be, if you can give a rescue doggy some love, consider it. It's difficult at times, but overall it's extremely rewarding and there are so many that need it. So until next week, stay safe out there, everyone. And I will leave you with this. We need to deal the cards we're dealt with and make the most of life. And Clyde shows us that.